So many people hang so much importance on IQ and intelligence, and the idea of genius as a mark of self-worth. They often violently react when someone brings up facts that undermine the importance of their IQ. Here are the top 10 things people don't understand about intelligence and IQ. Number 10, genius is a measure of high IQ or incredible depth of knowledge on just one thing. On the scale of IQ, genius is considered above 140 points. People tend to defer to geniuses on issues they really shouldn't, as quite often geniuses are just really amazing at one area like Einstein, but often terrible at a lot of other areas of life. It is because of this that the ideas of genius are beginning to be rethought by a lot of experts instead of the old-fashioned viewpoint which helped in propagating eugenics. Number 9, your IQ fluctuates throughout your life. Many people have their IQ tested in school as a way to determine their potential to learn in school. However, that number does not stick with you all your life. It dips and rises, but usually dips as you age. As you get older and more focused on a particular field and aren't practicing things like math all the time, your IQ naturally dips. So if you got that IQ test at 10 and think you're hot shit, it's likely that score is much lower now, and that's okay. Your mind is focused on processing things that the IQ test can't test for. Number eight, hard work has a greater impact on one's future success than IQ. I've always said that IQ is a measure of how much you will be underpaid in life. While funny, it's not exactly the case. Most studies show that IQ has little impact on how successful in life you will be. This is the reason why it's better to praise your child for hard work instead of being smart. There is nothing your child can do to be smarter, it's only genes, environment, and epigenetics. Hard work is something they need to be rewarded for. Number seven, education and intelligence are not the same thing. If you get into a discussion with a person without a higher education, or you yourself don't have a higher education, often a debate with them is difficult as they assume your assertion of their lack of knowledge and expertise is telling them that they are mentally inferior. Intelligence is the potential to learn, education is the long-term payoff of a lot of hard work to learn. If you are an academic, go out of your way to treat them like an intelligent being and separate education and intelligence from each other. If you don't have a higher education, be open to what experts have to say. If you're intelligent, you will have a lot of potential for learning. If that was the case, there'd be fields of research I am incredibly stupid at because there's just too much to know. Number six, IQ is a very flawed but useful tool. As it is rather impossible for someone to have a high IQ and not be intellectually intelligent, people assume the complete opposite, that if you have a low IQ, you must be completely unintelligent. This is actually not the case. If you had given our ancestors just 100 years ago the modern IQ test, many wouldn't have made it over 100, and the IQ test has gotten better at adjusting for cultural norms. One of the big things the IQ test tests for is the ability to think abstractly. Thanks to the increase in consumption of fictional media, increased education, and increased leisure time, the ability to think in the abstract is rising dramatically. Back then, only the leisure class often had access or time to mentally play with the abstract. Not focusing on what was real could mean death. A low IQ does not necessarily mean a low intelligence. There's no good way to measure intelligence in everyone. However, since we know high intelligence links well with high IQ, we will use IQ as a measure in studies. But these studies are, of course, ignoring all the intelligent people with not so high of IQs. Number five, culture impacts IQ, genes impact intelligence. Over a large enough population study, they have found 50 genes for intelligence Though there are hundreds to thousands more, and they work and interact in very minor ways that if we were to genetically modify people to have all these genes, they may or may not end up any smarter. Many of them have something to do with early growth phases of brain cells. According to scientists, 80% of intelligence is genetic. However, that doesn't mean IQ. IQ is more affected by culture, and what your culture decides is important to shape your developing brain from infancy to adulthood. If things like abstract thinking is suppressed, you're not going to get high IQ people. Being social can also use up mental resources, so intelligent people with low IQs but great social skills can climb the social ladder way better than an antisocial person with high IQs, so some cultures often idealize social connections over academics. Number four, environment and poverty can damage IQ. Minds and cultures focused on survival are those cultures who have their abstract thinking suppressed. Poverty and stress from poverty is a survival mindset, and studies show that IQ drops significantly if one goes from a stable income to an unstable or low income, such as the recession. Living in a food desert and not getting the right natural vitamins, living in polluted areas with mercury and lead, and just living in hopelessness can drop your IQ right through the floor. 
Just having a book in your house and one-on-one -on -one interactions with your children can increase their IQs, something poor people are usually too busy to do as they're working three jobs. Brains are incredibly plastic and will fit the situation based on what it was born into. Which is why, number three, scientists refusing to link IQ and race is not political correctness, it's genuinely an absurd concept. We can't use a test to tell someone has low intelligence, just high intelligence, and there are so many factors that lead to low intelligence in normal people that causes massive fluctuations. As there are so many factors involving intelligence, we can't test or know yet, so science dismisses even asking the question if some groups of people are less intelligent just naturally. Is it possible? Sure, but until we have probably better neurological analysis testing, this question does not have an answer with sufficient data to have any certainty about it. It's not PCism, it's just how science works. Number two, IQ is rising every generation worldwide. A concept called the Flynn Effect occurs, and at a nearly constant rate throughout the world, it's shown that there is a worldwide rise of IQ by three points every 10 years. This is caused by shifting cultural values caused by the rise of the internet and tech jobs, better education, low poverty, and better nutrition. IQ in Scandinavia is rising much slower than the rest of the world at only one IQ point per decade, as they have the best nutrition, best social welfare, and some of the best education and lowest poverty. This sounds all PC and kumbaya, but if the Earth was a computer, most of the processing power is completely wasted. Humanity has a lot of problems it could solve, but until it is much better organized to ensure we're all on a level playing field from cradle to grave, we will never truly tap the real human potential. We have no way of knowing this, but there is possibly someone genetically smarter than Einstein doing manual labor in a field, uneducated and suffering from PTSD from the last guerrilla warfare attack, or someone in a ghetto whose mind is just focusing on not getting shot or drinking lead-laden water. The Earth is like a computer riddled with viruses and malware. IQ must be nurtured to reach nature's full potential. And the last and number one thing, high IQ can make one even more susceptible to bias. Many studies have been done on people with high IQs and it appears that while it's a little harder to gain a bad idea, once you have it, if you haven't trained your mind in skepticism, your bias along with your logic will trap you in that bad idea even more than someone with a low IQ. You think, hey, I'm smart, therefore I must be right, and your rationalization circuitry goes into overdrive to protect yourself from thinking you are wrong. The Flynn effect is amazing, but without training in skepticism, which is counterintuitive to how the brain naturally works, we will have a planet full of self-certain, arrogant people whose minds can't be changed because they're so smart that's also preventing us from reaching our full potential. Thank you for watching. All links are in the below bar. I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, like, rate, and subscribe to the channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Also, check out my WordPress blog. I wrote too many scripts and don't feel like turning them all into videos. This week's blog discusses the obsoleteness of the Renaissance man over an organizer in the modern era. Have a great day!